Hi folks, this is not Scott McGinnis from Iron Sport Videos. I am Janice, his wife, coming to you from our home in Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, we decided we would interview the man who usually does the interviewing so you could get to know more about the guy behind the camera and behind our Sport Videos. I have a few questions to ask him and others have sent some in. And the important thing that you should know is that he does not know what I'm going to ask him. So let's bring Scott in and we'll get started. Well, Scott, isn't this when you usually thank people for coming? Uh, yeah, usually. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for coming, sitting okay. down with us. All right. Uh, so let's ask some questions, all right? Perfect. Um, how about you start with walking us through your own history in arm wrestling? Uh, okay, I got started, I can't remember the exact year, 85 or 86. Uh, a friend of mine, Rick Pinkney, uh, talked me into going to a tournament with him and helping him spot judge didn't have a clue about uh, organized arm wrestling, didn't know any about, anything about the rules, so we got to uh, a little bar in Digby, Nova Scotia, and he gave me a crash course in about uh, 15 or 20 minutes about how to help him spot judge and, uh, and the basic rules, and uh, that was my first tournament, and I was so excited that when I got to see that, I was hooked, uh, and I've uh, been pretty well with it ever since. Great. All right. And how about your own experience as a puller? Um, I actually didn't start arm pulling myself until uh, hmm, into the 90s. I spent the first uh, few years strictly refereeing, um, graduating from being a spot judge uh, into a head referee, and then uh, um, started uh, arm wrestling a little bit more, a little bit more. It was not very successful. Um, kept getting my butt kicked. I think I went a year before I actually won my first match in a tournament. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, uh, but I kept at it and uh, eventually got a little bit better. And uh, by the time I actually started to come around, uh, we were having a family and uh, I took the next couple of years off to uh, to uh, help out with the family more. I stayed home for the first year with our daughter and uh, I think that was it until she was two or three years old. And uh, then I went back, uh, I went back to uh, arm wrestling uh, to try and arm wrestle again and started uh, training with Rick Pinkney for uh, a fair amount of time, three or four times uh, a week uh, at his place. And uh, I don't remember if that was before I got rushed into the hospital. I got rushed into the hospital for the first time uh, with some little bit of heart trouble. Uh, gave us a little bit of a scare, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and then when I, when I w went back to training again, Rick and I went to the gym and uh, for the next year and a half, two years, I put in a lot of, uh, a lot of hours at the gym got considerably bigger, considerably stronger, and uh, and really started to uh, learn how to arm wrestle over the next uh, two to three years before I got uh, sent to the hospital for the second time with some <laughs> heart trouble, and that was pretty well it. I was pretty well cut down, just as I was really learning how to uh, how to arm wrestle, how to use my hand, and, and whatever strength I had developed, uh, uh, and that was pretty well it for my actual arm wrestling career. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of success and a lot of fun. Yeah. More importantly, a lot of fun, so. Okay. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we had a question sent in from Terry Palaszczuk, who wanted okay. some more uh, information about you, some more background information, where you live, family, kids, and that kind of thing. You want to give some background on yourself? Okay. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's out on the east coast of Canada. Um, Working class uh, family growing up. I uh, went to school, played uh, basketball. Was a pretty good basketball player all through high school. Um, I don't know. Went to work uh, fairly young, 19, 19 or 20 years of age. I I uh, was working full time. I never went to university. Um, we've been married for oh, scares me. It'll be uh, 21 years uh, this year. We have a 19 going on 20 year old daughter. I don't know what else there is to really say. Okay. <laughs> Should yep. I say anything else? That's, no, I'm that's just, enough, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, so, what started Arm Sport Videos? Arm Sport Videos, actually, way back in in uh, the early or the mid '80s, uh, Rick Pinkney and I were videotaping everything that we went to, every tournament uh, uh, that he put on. One of us would be setting up the video camera, and. Uh, Every tournament he would go to, he would set up the video camera, bring me home the tapes, and we would, we would sit in front of the TV editing. Um, so then once I actually finished arm wrestling, 
um, I was watching what Rick was doing with Nova Scotia Arm Wrestling. He was the founder of Nova Scotia Arm Wrestling. And you and I actually founded uh, Arm Wrestling's uh, first newsletter with uh, pictures and uh, everything. So for the next, for a couple of years, 98, 99, 2000, um, I was going around to all the different tournaments and just taking photographs for this newsletter. Um, so it quickly became, I quickly became the guy who had this huge library of, uh, of arm wrestling photographs. And uh, then as we just started playing with, uh, playing with video, and uh, probably in about uh, 2001, 2001, 2002, um, I was going to all the tournaments and strictly videotaping them, taking photos off the video, and then wherever we could, we put up little little clips of uh, of arm wrestling videos, but not knowing very much about the internet and the web, and not having very much space, we uh, we <laughs> were very limited as to what we could do. Um, and then Rick and I have been tossing around an idea of uh, what do we do with all we have all, all these uh, hundreds of hours of arm wrestling videos. It'd be nice to share them with everybody, and uh, so I started converting them to DVD and and then onto a video, so onto the internet. Um, so probably in about 2000 and three I think is when we really started to put some stuff on the internet and it was very underground nobody knew anything about it and uh, but we were always limited by the space that we could actually afford to buy we could only afford to buy small small amounts of space um, so we put up some clips and when we figured everybody would get bored with those we'd start again uh, so we were never able to actually share this this big library which was our dream and uh, up until now we've still not been able to to uh, complete that but uh, we're pretty darn close right actually right now as we speak what is this uh, uh, January 30th mm -hmm. January 30th 2009 we're really really close to being able to accomplish what we've uh, set up to do okay all right I think that explains how we got started yes <laughs> yeah uh, so most people wouldn't know what a trying year in the past one has been for you how about you run through some of the challenges that you've run into okay January of 2008 I entered into an agreement with a uh, a couple of guys to redesign the website because I always thought the website, although it was fairly user friendly, it was uh, fairly clunky and very uh, generic and not very professional looking. So I entered into an agreement with two guys. One guy was going to design a new website for me, which he did, and the second guy was going to implement and uh, and encode all the videos so that they would play a lot faster and, and not just Windows Media. They were going to play in a flash player. Everything was supposed to be much quicker. Well, the first guy did his job, the second guy disappeared. So that took like from January till end of March, 1st of April. So that wasted three months of my time, and I'm, so I'm getting nowhere. But the whole time, I'm still going out and videotaping and trying to deal with these guys in the background. So by the time I think April rolls around, finally we said, okay, enough was enough. We're on to the next guys. So I take the artwork that I originally paid for, uh, to the next web designer. So this guy strings me along for another two months, telling him, oh yeah, we can do everything in need, there's no problem, there's no problem. Well, he didn't have a clue on how to implement what was already designed, so he spent the next uh, probably two, maybe three months um, just jerking me around. Um, but I hadn't paid anybody any money yet, so I didn't know how much complaining and screaming I could do. I, you know, I mean, I can bitch so much, but then people don't want to hear you, and they're not going to do any work for you. So, after about three months, we move from him on to the next guy. Right, so we're on to our third guy then, right? So the third guy, we're probably into the summer. So the third guy takes the next uh, two months, September, uh, August, September, and he gets everything pretty well I'd say 75% complete. I'm thinking, okay, this is great. I'm going to get to go away to the worlds in December. When I come back, everything's going to be on this new website, and uh, we should be up and rolling. I'll be able to um, show everybody this huge library of videos that, that we had that I have in my possession and, and can't share with everybody. Um, and lo and behold, this guy disappears. He just he doesn't answer emails, no emails, no phone calls, nothing for about a month. and. Uh, so then basically when I get back from the Worlds in December, um, I get an email saying, okay, we're all ready to go. Where's my money? Well, by then I'd had enough, so I said, go pound sand. I'll <laughs> find somebody else. So for the past three, three may, maybe four weeks at the most, um, I've been dealing with the current guy who's actually Eddie McClellan from uh, the Vice President of Nova Scotia Arm Wrestling. 
So it's been able to accomplish in three to four weeks what these guys have not been able to do in a year. And so we should be actually launching the new site the 1st of February, sometime next week. So that being said, so all in the meantime, where Armsport Video sits right now, I bought what was called Unlimited Space website. Well, come to find out that Unlimited Space is not unlimited. So as I was building, uh, building up the library of videos, the company cut me off. They just shut down the, the site. We're talking to them, they're saying you're using too much space. How can I use too much space? I have an unlimited, <laughs> unlimited space website. Um, so in the meantime, they forced me, in order to not be shut down completely, they forced me to, uh, to work under a cap of 50 gigabytes. So if you know anything about videos at all, 50 gigabytes of space on a website is not very big, considering that most computers now are coming with 500 gigabytes of space or a terabyte of space. 50 gigabytes is not very much. So I basically was reduced for the past six, seven months um, to 2008 videos and basically one of the year 2007, um, which to me really, really sucks because I'm telling people I've got this huge library and I want to be able to share with everybody, and I can't. And my hands are tied, and because of legalities and the threat of them shutting me down, there's nothing I can do. So that brings us almost up to date, except for the fact that now I come back from the worlds in Kelowna, British Columbia, and I went through not one, but two computer crashes <laughs> in the month of December. It, wasn't ready. it was so not only <clears throat> excuse me was Armsport Videos on hold. Um, <clears throat> I actually I work for a living as well, and my own small uh, delivery company. Um, I couldn't invoice my customers, uh, so that meant no revenue. Um, so no customers got invoices from November of uh, of 2008. Uh, so we went. November 2008, December 2008, and halfway through January before I could actually invoice my customers. So hopefully revenue will start flowing <laughs> again really, really soon. Um, but I, I know I got all the video from the world's captured. I have a day and a half edited and then lost it. So I had to start again. So now I've got all the video. I've got two days of video captured one day completely edited, another day uh, that I've started on. Um, I'm about, I would say, a month to a month and a half behind. Um, now, I have taken the next month off. Uh, I have no traveling for the next month. Maybe I can get some uh, tournaments caught up and get back rolling in a timely manner. I always like to I do a tournament, come back home, go to work, try and have the tournament up the, ne the following week. Well, right, I'm still working on tournaments from October, November of 2008. So bear with me, folks. I'm, I'll am i get there in the next month or so. Yeah. I think that was pretty in-depth, right? That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm dry. I need a drink. Yes. Uh, also, what people don't fully realize, I would imagine, is that traveling to the tournaments that you do is really only part of the equation, that you come back and you spend hours and hours in this room uh, editing the video so it's uh, viewable for your for the people visiting your site. Uh, so Terry also wanted to know how you juggle work, marriage, kids, and life in general. <laughs> I think maybe you should answer that question better than, better than you could probably answer it better than I. <clears throat> do I, I don't always do a very good job. <laughs> I, I don't always do a very good job. Part of the reason I took a, a month off um, is was uh, no pressure by my family at all, but I felt that I was neglecting them. I did a lot, an awful lot. I did 20 trips outside of uh, Nova Scotia last year. Uh, so in one year, one calendar year, I did 20 trips. I was away a lot. I had a lot of fun, but sometimes my family life suffered. Um, work is work is pretty easy um, since I work for myself. Monday to Friday, I, I, I work, and uh, um, but my biggest revenue day is uh, Saturday night into Sunday. So when everybody else is sleeping, um, we're out driving all night. Um, so I have a couple part-timers that help out with that. So that makes it uh, that makes it a bit easier. Um, our daughter Tiffany is uh, is 19, going on 20. She doesn't really want to hang out with Dad that much anymore, anyway. So she's not as much of a factor. I try and be home every day after supper, and and uh, we pick her up and do whatever is necessary. The rest of it, I guess, you'd have to answer. Am I juggling well enough? <laughs> Some days, yes, yeah. you do get overwhelmed because yeah. there's a lot going but, on. Yeah, there are times, 
Um, there are times, like right now, I'm really feeling stressed because of uh, being so far behind on videos. Um, like I said, I don't always do a real good job of uh, juggling everything. Uh, I do the best I can, and uh, some, sometimes uh, people don't understand why I say no. Sometimes it's just family reasons I need to spend. And, it's not, and I want to really make this clear. It's not because I, I get pressured at home. It's because I feel I put pressure on myself that maybe I'm neglecting things at home or my wife or my, my family. So I, I try and stay home when I can. And when I am home, I tend not to go very far from home. I, I basically stay home and we do whatever, just hang out on the weekends. And just, if I'm not to a tournament, it's not unusual for me actually not to leave the house from Friday afternoon when I get home until I go to work Monday again Monday morning. It's not unusual for me not to actually leave the house. So, um, so I guess she can tell you. <laughs> she tells no, you better good. than I. That's good. <clears throat> uh, so how about you list some of the places that you've been in the last little while videotaping arm wrestling? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I just I went to Bristol, Connecticut again this month, the month of January for the second, third, or fourth time. I'm not sure. I went to uh, Albemarle, North Carolina. Forgive me if I'm not saying that properly. <laughs> uh, Kelowna, BC for the Worlds. I got to go to Warsaw, Poland for the Nemirov Cup. That was a huge thrill for me. Um, <clears throat> I've gone to Bulgaria for the Worlds. I've gone to Manchester, England for the Worlds and also for Arm Wars. Um, Albany, Georgia. Uh, Re uh, Lake Tahoe, Nevada, Salt Lake City all up and down the east coast of the U.S. Kansas City for Gary Roberts and Arm TV's uh, Ruler of the Nation. Uh, that was an entertaining tournament. Wow. I'm, <laughs> I'm at a loss, but I, what, what uh, my wife Janice did do for me on the new website, um, she actually has logged onto a map uh, that you can click to see where we've gone and, and what tournaments we've covered. And uh, there's... Uh, even though I've taken a month off, there's uh, <laughs> still some traveling to come this year. I know I've got three three trips planned overseas this year. Yes. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited. And you're coming with me on one of them uh -huh, to uh, Italy for the world. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I hope, Terry, I hope that's... Uh, oh, and you know what? Since Terry asked a question, I should uh, mention, too, that I was just out to <laughs> Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Um, Saskatchewan is Terry Palachuk's home. And I was just out there for the Canadian Nationals just this past year, which Kane Hemsing hosted, and uh, we had a real good time out there. So, so I pretty lucky guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I know people ask you uh, how you can afford to do so much traveling. So you want to clarify that for folks? Um, it's really, really expensive. A lot of promoters are helping out. So when promoters are asking me now, um, I can I cannot foot the bill 100% on my own to be quite honest. So they've been getting options. You can buy me a plane ticket, um, you can pay for my uh, my hotel and all my meals, or you can just give me a straight $500 for the weekend, but it all helps. So anytime that uh, I've been lucky enough that people have actually just donated money to me, mm -hmm. and it just goes to the awards the travel fund, and uh, uh, I've used points to fly. A lot of it's come, a lot of it's come out of uh, my hour own pocket. Um, it's not always easy, but um, what I'm, I'm actually trying. <laughs> part of the plan is to try and build traffic and and build a fairly uh, a fairly big uh, traffic flow on the site, which is uh, w which it is doing right now. And uh, hopefully, uh, the more promoters continue to help, the more I'll be able to travel. Mm -hmm. And it also certainly looks like on the map that you travel more to the U.S. than you do across Canada these days. Why is that? <clears throat> I cannot honestly answer why it is, but I get more phone calls from the U.S. than I do from Can from Canada. It almost seems to be a Canadian thing that well, here in Canada we don't embrace something until they until it's, they've made it in the U.S. And that seems to be what's happening to me. I have uh, been really really lucky to have promoters and uh, friends all throughout the U.S. want me to come and, and uh, film their tournaments. And I don't get that many calls uh, from uh, from promoters in Canada. Uh, it's also a lot more expensive to fly mm -hmm. in Canada. So if somebody from from uh, Old West wanted to uh, call me, you know, and uh, it's costing eight hundred dollars to fly to West, well, that's two trips to the U.S. Right. So, and I understand that promoters don't have a whole lot of money; they can't afford to be forking out eight hundred thousand dollars for plane tickets. Well, neither can I. Mm -hmm. So that's why I go to more 
U.S. tournaments than uh, Canadian tournaments. And there's a lot more tournaments going on in the U.S. than there is in Canada. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I still do. I still, <clears throat> Canada's home, and I still want to travel within Canada. Um, in the next couple of months, I plan on going up to the Mike Gould Classic at the end of the March. Um, always been a really, really good tournament uh, year after year. But I think outside of the Canadian Nationals, that's the only other. That's the only tournaments uh, in Canada this year that uh, that are in my schedule. Everything else is uh, either in the U.S. or uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that answers it. I'm not really sure if it does or not. Yep. But uh, it also sounds <clears throat> like you're quite the ladies' man at these tournaments. What's up with that? <laughs> I don't know where you get that. It sounds <laughs> like I'm quite the ladies' man. Um, I have a lot of friends, some of which are female. Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe they just find me cuddly. I have no idea. The big old ugly fat ball <laughs> guy is uh, cuddly. I don't know. Um, and that's really funny coming from you because you know how confident I am. About that. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. So um, I do have a lot of female friends though at the uh, in, in our muscling. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, but they're friends. Yep. So. Is that a good answer? Yep. <laughs> Talk do. about being put That'll on a spot do. by your wife. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so what are you most proud of in this undertaking? In our sport videos? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I may be stumped. Wow. I may be stumped. The thing that's... <clears throat> The way the arm wrestlers and promoters treat me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I still think I'm just some guy with a, a video camera, and uh, I got a pretty good eye for arm wrestling. I understand arm wrestling, um, but I don't think it's that difficult to videotape uh, an arm wrestling tournament. Um, however, um, I try to carry myself very professionally, and I think, I think the arm wrestlers and the promoters actually appreciate that in the way I talk to them and with them and the way they talk uh, with me. Uh, I'm most proud of that, I think, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ed McClellan wants to know how you stay motivated to contribute to arm wrestling the way you do. <clears throat> That's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> arm wrestling is a very, very political um, sport. I try not to, uh, not to get too involved too much in the politics. I was involved heavily in the pol politics here in uh, Nova Scotia Arm Wrestling. I was vice president of uh, Nova Scotia Arm Wrestling. I was starting to suffer huge burnout um, just from some of the uh, political turmoil and political crap that seemed to be going on ar around us. And uh, that was really, really starting to get me down. So I stepped away from all of that and just concentrated on, on our sport videos. I think, I, I don't think I'd be as motivated if I still only stayed in Nova Scotia. Um, right now it's a very small core group of arm wrestlers in Nova Scotia that's coming out to the tournaments. Um, and maybe I'm spoiled now because of the traveling I've done. Um, but I find that even though the guys are great and they're, and they're good arm wrestlers and they're entertaining as hell, I start to get bored mm -hmm. halfway through a tournament. Um, so I think it's, as a, it's as, as a result of all the traveling I've gotten to do and the different arm wrestlers I'm exposed to now, um, that that makes a huge a huge difference. And the pressure I put upon myself in uh, in arm wrestling is more motivating than anything else. But I'm also never ever ever happy with the status quo. I've, uh, as you know yourself, so I've already got stuff planned for this year, next year that I'm I'm working on that I want to see things pushed a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> a couple things that I tried last year that no one knows about as of yet, um, I may try again. Um, there was a little undertaking I started with, uh, film, with some filming and it just didn't pan out the way I thought or maybe I just didn't do a good enough job, I don't know, I wasn't happy with it, but I'd like to try it again and I'd like to tell you more, but <laughs> it, uh, it'll, it'll remain uh, just a secret until I, I get up to get the kinks worked out. But I don't know what keeps me motivated. I really, more than anything else, the, the people, I think, the people I've gotten to meet and, and get to hang out with when I go to tournaments, they keep me motivated a lot, I, I think. Okay? okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so who are your idols <laughs> in arm wrestling? Wow. 
So a guy I look up to an awful lot in arm wrestling is Rick Pinkney. A very good friend of mine from here in Nova Scotia. We've been friends for over 20 years. Um, I don't know, it'd be different people for different reasons. Um, man, the, you know, <laughs> and now I'm really afraid that I'd leave people out. I, I'd really, I look at, I look up to um, different arm wrestlers for, for uh, different reasons. Um, we have a, a, a young guy here, uh, Vernon Weatherby. Sorry, Vernon, he's not a great arm wrestler. Keeps coming out all the time. You know what, just shows up tournament after tournament after tournament. Um, I, I don't know I don't know what gives him the will to keep coming back. Um, I mean, you have, of course, champions, John Brzezink, and Earl Wilson, and Ryan Nesby, and Timmy Bresnan, um, David Randall. I got to meet Cleve Dean um, for the first time. Uh, when I was in Georgia last year, that was a huge thrill for me. Um, that's the Nermas inside the promotion side. Boy, everybody that tries to promote a tournament across uh, Canada and the U.S. deserves a, a huge pat on the back because it's a it's a really tough job and and for the most part a thankless job. But you know, <laughs> I don't know. That's the best I can come up with yeah. on that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, who would you like to interview and haven't had a chance to yet? I'm actually not going to answer that. <laughs> I have, there are people that I haven't had a chance to interview yet, and, and I will, and I've talked to a few. Um, there's so many people out there that I still want to sit down and talk with. Uh, part of the problem is me, and, and uh, sometimes I'm too shy to go up and, and ask the question. I know people will laugh, mm -hmm. but <laughs> um, I'm not going to say who right now. There's still, okay. I still have a list of people that I wanted to sit down and talk with, though. Okay. Okay, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> um, so tell us about a couple of your favorite matches. Is that even possible? It, it might be a couple that really, fairly recently, I... Uh, I traveled over to uh, to Poland for Nemirov Cup, so I planned this uh, for months with uh, Timmy Bresnan and uh, and also Christian Binney were going as well. So Christian Binney and I are sitting out in the audience, and, and I'm videotaping the tournament. And Timmy Bresnan goes up to face uh, the big the big Russian who was supposed to be uh, the next greatest thing in arm arm wrestling. Excuse me, Denis Saplenkov, and. Uh, I was jumping around like a little kid. Timmy Bresnan busted the guy's hand open, um, then lost it and ended up eventually losing to him. But just sitting back, and, and I, I was a fan again, never mind uh, videotaping it. I was a fan. I was excited for, for my friend Timmy to have such great success in that tournament and then at that time. And then, so what in essence that did, though, was that paved the way for uh, John Brzezink to actually come on later uh, to arm wrestle him. Mm -hmm. So the stage was set, the, the uh, arm wrestling's living legend, John Brzezink, is, is pulling uh, the, the, the new Russian superstar. And the whole, the whole room was electric with anticipation. Mm -hmm. So again, I forgot that I was there to, to film the matches. John ends up beating uh, Dennis. The place goes crazy. And it was uh, a really, really exciting, uh, exciting match. So just, that's just a couple matches recently. Um, I guess if I was to really think about it and go back, there's... There's probably all kinds, yeah. But that's a couple of examples, anyway. That's what I, that's what I saw fairly recently. Um, what do you see for the future of arm wrestling? Boy. The status quo, unless for some reason a corporate sponsor can be can be landed. I don't see I don't see it going. It's been on TV. Is if that's the goal for it to get back to television, that's fine. I hear a lot of talk about the Olympics. Uh, I think everything costs money. If a big corporate sponsor could be uh, could be brought on board, maybe that'd be possible. Um, I saw different things in the past few years. Uh, Travis Bajan, uh, <coughs> excuse me, got hooked up with a. Uh, a supplement company and started the uh, the NAL and uh, that seemed like it was going in a really really cool and new direction uh, but then uh, I'm not exactly sure of the details but uh, the sponsor ended up uh, being gone so 
so that went away. I, I thought that was exciting. Um, everything costs money, and without money, I'm not sure where where we can go. It's, I mean, for me, it's still fun to go around to the tournaments, but I'm not sure what the next steps are to be taken without money. Mm -hmm. As with everything. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the way guys like you cover arm wrestling? Do you think that'll change? <clears throat> I don't. I don't know if it'll change. It'd be nice if it, it could change. Some some things are left up to the promoters and the way they run tournaments. Um, I go to a tournament. I'm there as their guest, so I don't get to dictate really what happens. Um, it, it, I've I've listened to uh, people who watch arm sport videos, and they like they like uh, to have things broken down by weight class. It's not always possible if the promoter doesn't doesn't run a tournament that way. And with the cost of extra baggage, and uh, the airlines are, are really soaking it, um, I can't afford to bring three tripods and three cameras um, every single time. If I could, when they're running three tables, it would be no, be no problem. But they're charging you 15 to $25 mm -hmm. for your first bag, and then $15 for your second bag. So I'm trying to, uh, to keep costs down to a minimum, carrying one tripod and a camera over my shoulder, and maybe I can squeeze another camera into my uh, <laughs> into my luggage, and we go through this myriad of trying to pack. And okay, it shouldn't be too cold, so I only need like <laughs> one extra pair of shorts. And um, so I, when we're holding events here, and I control the atmosphere, see, I can set up lights and tripods mm -hmm. and, and uh, do whatever I want when I'm going out on the road. It's a little bit more difficult, and uh, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of uh, filming it from the tripod rather than freehand. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure if it can change, if we can change the way we cover it, um, and I'm not really sure if there's going to be any more people covering it the way that I do, or uh, or Gary from Arm TV covers, or the guys over in Europe, Arm Bets, the way they cover. So there's basically um, the three of us. I'm not sure if anybody else is going to come along or not. They may. I have no idea. Oh, and there, there is a, a couple guys up in Ontario, uh, John Milne and Jerry Milne from uh, In the Hook, um, but they're not written as of date. They're not uh, traveling as much as uh, Gary and I are, and they're doing most of the things that they do are right in Ontario. Uh, but I do. I know John made a trip over to Manchester last year. Um, I know he's going to a tournament in February at the Black Bear in Hartford, Connecticut, that I'm, I'm uh, heading to as well. So... But to a certain degree, he, um, John's going because he's involved in the tournament. He has a match, and and he's got a bunch of the guys from uh, from his club are going as well. So I'm not sure if if we're going to change or if more people are going to come. I, I'm not really sure at this point. I don't see a whole lot more coming on board yeah. and and doing. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I wonder how Gary Roberts can do it, mm -hmm. um, and I know people wonder how I do it because <laughs> I get uh, asked a fair amount. Yeah. Um, so I don't see anybody else on the horizon that's going to be quote unquote dedicated like Gary and or I. Mm -hmm. So, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so switching gears a little bit, uh, what's your take on steroids in arm wrestling? Don't care. I personally, and some people are going to crucify this for me, I personally don't care. Um, you want a drug test? Go ahead, drug test. I don't really care. If a guy is taking it, or if he's not taking it, that's his choice. I didn't care about it in the Olympics. I certainly don't care about it in arm wrestling. <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter to me one way or another. Um, if you know what, if you're taking something under doctor supervision, fine. If you're out on the black market buying foolish things and taking your life in your own hands, that's a whole different matter. Um, but if you're taking things under doctor supervision, I don't. I don't have a big issue with it. If guys want to take it, they want to take it. Yeah. I think uh, uh, the Olympics is fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, steroid users and or the doctors always seem to be uh, one or two steps ahead of the drug testers. And uh, there's an awful lot of money to be made uh, at the Olympic level. Now, when it relates to arm wrestling, it almost seems that there's not, not that there's a whole lot of money, but it just it doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... Not, I don't lose any sleep over it. Just I'm wondering, oh, geez, I wonder if he's juicing or he's juicing. I could care less. Is he putting on a good show? I'm entertained. I'm happy. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I know people won't be happy because there's some people who just 
really, really against it, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in closing, I'm wondering if you would mind uh, sharing three things with your views or viewers that uh, they don't know about you already. <laughs> I'm incredibly shy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know most people will sit back and laugh and say they don't, but so I'll, just a very quick story. I was going to uh, tournaments and spending the whole weekend in my room. <laughs> I was so afraid to come out and actually talk to people that I wouldn't leave my room. I come out, shoot the uh, tournament, and then right back to my room. What is so bad is ordering room service. Um, and, and then in conjunction with that too, I would literally be almost uh, getting sick before I would travel to a, uh, a tournament up in the morning gagging and, and dry heaves because I'm so nervous about going somewhere. That's one. I don't know what else. I don't have a <laughs> What else don't they know? I, you know what? I'm really not sure. No? No. Do you know? No. I had nothing in mind. Okay. I'm just putting you on the spot. Yeah, quite. Jeez, it's... Uh, what they don't... I see, you know what? I. I thought for the most, maybe I'm not as open, as much of an open book as I thought I was, but I'm not exactly sure what people don't know. <laughs> I, what, you know what, if they ask me a question, I'm usually pretty open yeah. and honest, yeah. so whatever they, whatever people want to know for the most, most part, I try and tell them, but other than, I know um, I had uh, some conversations uh, at a tournament I was at and uh, people couldn't get over how shy. Mm -hmm that I was telling them I was and then some of the things I went through um, they they found that hard to believe you seem so confident all the time yeah it's all an act <laughs> right so okay yeah I, I'm not, you the hook yeah I'm at a total loss on that one so well if you have any questions send them in <laughs> and he'll answer them next uh, time yeah all right so is that it that's all that wasn't that bad no thank you okay and they have to talk us out. So this is Janice McGinnis for Armed Sport Videos with Scott McGinnis. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time. All right. See you. <laughs> <sighs> yep. Because you answered a couple as you went, so I didn't bother oh, okay. asking.